The Promise Neverland was an incredibly well received manga, slowly building in popularity to become a sales and critical juggernaut. This led to a 2019 anime adaptation that was well received by fans of old and new generations as well, at least in its first season. The same sadly couldn't be said for its second season, however. For a variety of reasons, season 2 of The Promise Neverland failed badly to live up to the potential of its first season or its source material. A few of season 2's problem involved skipping or changing entire arcs of the manga, poorly pacing of what was used and making bad ending even worse. Here's a deeper look at why the final season of one of the most acclaimed recent anime was such an incredible disappointment. The biggest reason for the failure of the season 2 was not showing the world building. The world where Promise Neverland was best was really vast and well built, but it never really reached the audience as the anime skipped many parts from it. The world of the Promise Neverland is called as the Demon World. The Demon World is a part of the world that many years ago was split into two between humans and demons after the promise was signed with the Rathri family. Now who is this Rathri family? They are the overseer to keep the promise intact and therefore aims to kill the children who escaped the farms and Goldie Pond as well as the supporters who helped them to keep the current state of the demon world and the promise intact. There are a portion of Rathri clans living in the human world as well. The part of the world belonging to the demons is comprised of many bizarre ecosystem and creatures some of which includes feral and bestial demons. But how did it come to this point that they had to divide the world into two parts? The history of the world goes way back in the time around a millennia ago. In this time before the construction of the plantations, both demon and human shared the same world, which led to frequent hunting of humans by demons and some humans soon after did the same with the demons. While some of the humans worshiped them out of fear of getting eaten. This became a continuous cycle as both sides killed and feared one another. In this time, Julius Rathri, the charismatic leader of a small group of fighters, is struggling to stay alive. He and his comrades fight day after day to kill as many demons as they can, but there simply seems to be no end in sight. Guilt-ridden and fueled with the desperation at the sight of so many dead bodies, Julius brings up the idea of offering a small selection of humans to whet the demons' appetite, which is immediately squashed by his comrades. One of the Julius friends pointed out that even if the demons accepted, they would never stop asking for more. They should instead focus on ideal future of having a world where all humankind would be safe without compromising anything on their end. He argues that this would be for the greater good, a small price to pay in exchange for the lifetime of peace. Then everything would be over. But his friends refuses again. Although disappointed, Julius reveals that it didn't matter if they disagreed or not, since he had already made a deal with the Demon King, who is the leader of all the demons in the demon world. With that promise and contract now, the demon bursts into their hideout and slaughter his friends, resulting in the first cattle human. Beyond and the government of the demon held a meeting now discussing how they should consume orphans when they are forbidden to do so after the Rathri clan's proposal of the treaty Beyond came out with the solution of building the farms to cultivate the young of the humans so as to satisfy the demons need of consumption of human flesh as well as to comply with the promise therefore Beyond solution was accepted and included as a part of the treaty When the world was split into two, the human gave some of their children to the demons as a parting gift when they fled from the demon world. The children were kept later in the plantations as livestock for the demon to consume. Just like some of the humans didn't approve of this deal, some of the demons did not approve of this deal as well, and thus refuses to even nibble any of the children born in the farm. This causes these demons to be branded as heathens and were shunned by their behaviors. which led to the birth of new religion called as heathens however while their religion prohibits them from eating humans born in the farm they wait for the promise to be broken and be able to hunt humans again the demons sonju and mujika which we encountered in the anime created a path comprised of dead blood sucker trees in order to serve as a hideout for himself and his companion mujika this is to avoid the plantation demon who rejects them as heathens for not eating humans 
Now do you remember the Grace Field house where all of our main characters grew up? That was one of the four farms where the human children left behind by their ancestors are raised as livestock by former livestock known as mamas and are branded with tattoos and shipped out at a certain ages to become offering to an unknown demon lord. And as we all know, it was set on fire by the children from the age of 5 to 12 who escaped to the demon world after discovering its true purpose. In present time, James is the 35th descendant of the Rathri clan. His younger brother Peter Rathri loves and idolizes his brother for years. The two of them lives under the illusion that their role as gatekeepers was noble until James discovered Julia's betrayal and the truth of the promise. While he is horrified and ashamed, James also knows that his hands are tied. He cannot abandon his role as mediator as this would result in the collapse of the system that has kept their two worlds different and balanced. So James does the only thing that he can think of. He takes the name and the persona of William Minerva and lays out little clues in the orphanages in the hopes that the future cattle children would be able to figure out what was happening in their world and lead them to him so that he can help them. He built its sanctuaries all over the demon realm such as Goldie Pond so the children have a safe place to rest. He believes that this is the only way for him to atone for his and his ancestors sins. On the other side of the demon world exists the human world. And at the end of the Promise Neverland story, the children who escaped from the grace field all reaches out to the human world. In chapter 173, Peter told Emma that the things that the demon were doing to them are the same things what humans are doing to each other for a very long time. Even the humans don't even eat humans. After entering the door, the grace field and the non-grace field children were teleported to Area 01, the former United States of America. It is revealed in chapter 179 that between 2020 and 2030 the human world was ravaged by diseases, epidemics, food shortages, abnormal weather conditions and world wars. In an effort of reconstruction, all national borders were abolished, making one huge nation. Children and the other humans from the farms wished to go to the human world in order to live at peace with demons. All of these important things and details were left out from the season 2 of the Promised Neverland. I don't know why did they create a season 2 like that. And such a great and vast world building really need a remake of this anime. What are your thoughts about this world building from the Promised Neverland? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I post daily anime content about top 10 top 5 listings, anime reviews, recommendations, news theories and all sorts of anime content on daily basis. So, if you enjoyed please subscribe and that was it and I will see you in the next one. Sayonara.